In this video, I'm going to show you the installation of a scratch coat. If you're not familiar with the term scratch coat, it's a coat of mortar that goes on metal lath before you install stone veneer because that's what the stone veneer adheres to. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. And without further ado, let's get started. This is part one of a three part series on how to install stone veneer. And we are going to be installing stone veneer over this bump out on the house. The tools you'll need to install the underlayment and the metal lath will be your basic carpentry tools, a utility knife for cutting the underlayment, a cap nailer if you wanna do it fast. And these are the fasteners for the cap nailer. This is a coil nailer, which is also known as a roofing nailer. And this is for installing the metal lath fast. This is for cutting the metal lath. This is just regular 10 snips. And you may or may not need these two tools depending on the application, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use these for. And you're gonna need hearing protection and eye protection and all this stuff can be found in my Amazon store. The link is in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I get a small commission, but it's at no extra cost to you to help support the channel. Those were the tools that's needed to install the underlayment and the metal lath. And now the rest of the tools for mixing up the mortar and scratch cutting, I'm gonna show you that here in a little bit. But a little note about this underlayment, this is 30 weight felt paper. In my jurisdiction, we can just use felt paper underneath the stone veneer. And in some locations, they require an underlayment and a rain screen. So that's a different product than what this is. But like I said, this is okay in my area. And this is diamond metal lath. It's just in diamond shapes. And what this does, it just holds the mortar so that when you go to apply the scratch coat, it has something to adhere to, and then the stone adheres to this. So I just wanna get that out of the way, so let's go ahead and start installing some felt paper. I'm gonna start down here at the bottom of the bump out, and as you can see, this stuff comes in a roll, and you can get this from Lowe's, Home Depot, stores like that, they should have it. It's a pretty common building material, and like I said, it's 30 weight felt paper. I like it because the 15 weight's a little thinner, so I want something strong and durable. So what I'm gonna do first is just kind of lay this about where it's going and roll it out a little bit. The idea here is just kind of get it to where it overlaps this sill plate about a half inch or so. So when water hits the underlayment, it rolls down and goes over the block and it doesn't get on the wood of the wall. I'm just gonna go ahead and tack a cap nail right here in the corner. All right, so that corner secured, and then we're gonna just pull this kind of tight to where it looks nice and flat and tack another one. And that's where working by yourself using a cap nailer comes in handy because you can just reach over and tack it in without trying to hold it and nail it. Now you can use just standard cap nails. Now these are much cheaper than have to buy a gun, but it's a little harder to do and slower. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do or afford. And now what we're gonna do is just keep laying this flat against the house. And then we're just going to tack it on. And now we don't need to put a bunch of cap nails in it because we're getting ready to put metal lath right over this. So we need just enough to hold it into place. Another tool you might need is a scaffolding system. If you're doing a bump out like I'm doing here or any exterior project on the side of your house, typically you're gonna need it. Right here is where the stone's going to end. So what I gotta do is just cut the felt paper to where it's gonna end right there. And then I gotta cut around this porch a little bit. So I'm just gonna take my utility knife and just go ahead and cut it roughly to length here. All right, so we got our first row of felt paper on. So now what we gotta do is go ahead and run another row on top of this row. And you always wanna start from the bottom and work up. You don't wanna start from the top and work down because your layers have to overlap because if water gets on it, it needs to be able to roll down over the first row and then down to the foundation. So if we take a look right here where the window is, as you can see, I had to cut around it and I like it nice and tight against the window's J channel. And if we look under here, I had to rip it down to go underneath this part of the window. And typically it would be best to have the underlayment under this window flange, but in this case, we're tucked up tight against under that window, so it's gonna be no problem. And right here, what we're gonna do when we 
overlap with the next layer. We're actually going to put a little bead of quad caulking here to seal it so that way when the water comes down it doesn't go behind this little cut right here and it just helps add a little layer of protection. Since the felt paper comes in a big roll I found it best to whenever you have an opportunity like this go ahead and cut the felt down. So what I'll do I'll just go ahead and tuck my tape measure into this J channel and then flex it around the corner. That gives me about a 60 inch piece, which is a five foot piece. So I can cut it down, it's easier to work with that way. Just a little tip. Easiest way to cut this stuff is to come over to a flat surface, go ahead and lay your roll of felt paper down, and then grab something with some weight to it. This is just an old bucket full of tools. And then we're just gonna lay it on the edge of the felt paper and roll it out. And then what we're gonna do is just measure our length and we wanted 60 inches on that one part. So I'm just gonna take a red pencil because red shows up on black felt very easy. And then what I'm gonna do is just take a straight piece of lumber. And in this case, it's an old two by four. Just try to get it roughly square there. And then take your utility knife and cut down the straight edge. And then that is definitely the easiest way to cut felt paper when you got a pre-cut to length. I'm gonna explain the next row of underlayment and then the rest of them are the same sequence over and over again. So just so you're aware, be sure to overlap where this mark is on this felt paper. But if you don't have that mark, just make sure you overlap at least an inch. So we're just gonna hold this next piece up here, like so, get our overlap correct, and then set it about where it's gonna go. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tack one of my cap nails in here. And this is always easier to do with two people, just so you know. But I'm so used to working by myself, I wouldn't know how to act with a second person. All right. So now, as you can see, we are overlapped. And I'm just gonna go ahead and square this up. And then we're just gonna fold around this edge. Make sure we're nice and tight on the corner. I'm gonna tack one right in this overlap. And then we're gonna tuck behind the J channel of this window. Really important to get behind that J channel because it's just like siding. You wanna make sure you have a nice seal there. All right, and now just keep that sequence running up until you get to the peak of the bump out. Before I get the scaffolding out and start running the underlayment up higher, I'm gonna go ahead and install the metal lath so that way we can install the metal lath and the felt paper at the same time off the scaffolding. So a little tidbit about metal lath, there's gonna be a smooth side and then a rough side. So you want the rough side down to where Whenever you run your mortar up for the scratch coat, it cups into that rough side because if you try to run it into that smooth side, it's harder to get the mortar in. So always put the rough side to where it's facing down. So when you install it, you should be able to rub your hand upwards to feel the roughness. So now that you know a little bit about the metal lath, be sure to wear gloves and wear eye protection because the edges are very sharp. You don't want to poke your eye out or cut your hands. And also if you're using a nailer like I am here, be sure to wear ear protection because it's very loud. So let's get started. Since we are applying the metal lath on an exterior structure, definitely make sure that you use galvanized nails. The very first thing we have to do is locate the studs on the wall because we need to make sure we secure the metal lath to a stud. So the easiest way to find a stud is to use a stud finder, but a cheaper way to do it, it may not be as quick, but all we gotta do is go through and peck on the wall until we hear to where it's either solid or not. So you can hear that hollow sound, there's no stud there. Right there where it sounds solid, there's a stud there. So just take a nail and tack it to where you think the stud is. And you can feel it go into a stud. So I know there is a stud there. And then if we go over, and it sounds like there's a stud about right here. Let's check. And there is. So now all I gotta do is take my red pencil 
since the wall is black, you can't see regular pencil. So this pencil is red lead and this can be found in my Amazon store as well. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that stud and mark this stud. And then what we gotta do is take our level, then just hold it on that red mark that we just made where we located the stud. And it looks like we are nice and plumb right there. And then we just gotta mark it. So now we know when we secure our lath to the wall, we're gonna hit a stud and it's easy to find them because we'll have them marked with red pencil. Now that I got my studs marked on the wall, I'm gonna mark how low I want this metal lath to come over this foundation. My grade is gonna be about 10 inches below here. So I'm gonna bring my metal lath down about 10 inches. So that way when it's graded, it's up against that stone to where it gives it a nice reveal off the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark 10 inches here. So about right there, and then come over here and come down about 10 inches. It ends up being about right where the dirt is. And now that I know how low my metal is gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over. And I already have it facing to where it's rough when I slide my hand up and smooth when I go down. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it into place. And I got this pipe coming up for my downspout, so I'm going to slide behind it for now. And then something like that. So now I want to shoot on a stud. Oop, the gun jumped there, so put two in right there. That happens sometimes. And now we're going to come over here, locate the other stud, and tap a nail on it. That looks good. And now what I like to do is nail about every six inches onto that stud. And then in the fields, I like to nail every about eight inches or so, eight to 10. So that way it holds that lath flat against the wall. And then I'm gonna go right across the bottom every six inches. And now that lath, the lath is installed there. And now down here on the block foundation, I'm gonna go through with tap cons after I go around the whole bump out. So now to get around this corner, I'm just gonna kind of fold it down to where it needs to go on the other side. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my hand and bend it sharply right around the corner because you want this corner to be relatively sharp just because your stone corners are gonna go on here. So you don't want this all bulged out. So you wanna make sure it's a nice tight corner. Then after you got nice and tight where you want it, we're just gonna go through and tack a nail here. And now I know there's a solid corner here on each side. So I'm just gonna go through and put a couple through here. All right, and now we just nail the rest off just like we did that side. Now I'm gonna be sure to put my ear protection in because I got a lot of nailing I'm gonna be doing, so I wanna protect my ears. Now when we install the next piece, we need to make sure we overlap about a couple inches. So that way it just has a nice lacing of the metal lath. And now all we gotta do is continue the run just as we started. Next thing I gotta do is cut these vents out where the metal lath went over them. You definitely need to have ventilation in your crawl space. So we gotta cut those out and then stone around them. And also, if you're wondering why I ran this metal lath over this foundation and I didn't just stick the stone veneer to the foundation, it's because if I did that, there's gonna be a little lip of a mortar difference where the scratch coat's gonna be if I did that. So you're gonna, you would notice it after you installed the stone over it. So that's why you wanna keep the same plane going down. And also, after I cut these out, I'm just gonna take tap cons and then tap con this metal lath to the foundation, just keep it tight against the foundation. So I'm gonna do that right now. I remember the first job I did, I did not run the metal lath all the way over the foundation like you see me doing here. And because of that, I used several gallons of mortar just to pad out that thickness to give me a flush look. And that's why I always run it over nowadays. When it comes to the second row and beyond, what you need to make sure you do is you overlap about an inch and a half to two inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut around the windows. And well, in this case, it's just a window, but you don't have to get this back behind the J channel like the underlayment. The best thing to do here is just visualize about up to the edge of the window, about a quarter inch. Then just take your 10 snips right here 
and then just kind of go and guesstimate about to where the edge is because you don't have to be right up against it to uh, have an effective piece of metal lath installed. So now I'm just gonna go through, cut around this window and nail it off just like we did the first piece. As you can see, I got all the underlayment and metal lath on. And as you noticed, I'm sure I got the window wrapped up in plastic. So that way any scratch coat mortar does not get on the window. And also I got one more thing to do before we apply the scratch coat. Before we put the mortar on the wall for the scratch coat, we need to install the brackets to hold the accessories like this light trim, which isn't going on this bump out, but it's going on the other bump out where the garage is. And then this uh, under sill, this is meant to go under a transition from siding to the foundation or underneath windows. So this is the one I got that I'm gonna be using. And if we take a measurement here, it looks like it's about two and a quarter inches thick. So we need to go under that window two and a quarter inches and then put a L bracket wherever there's going to be a break because these come and they're 21 and a half inches long. And then we're gonna install one of these L brackets. I got these from Amazon. They're two inch L brackets. They're zinc coated so they can be outdoors. And it's gonna go under here and hold that undersill into place. So I'll show you how to install these L brackets. So I went ahead and made marks where each joint is going to be for this undersill where the window is. So now all I gotta do is measure down to the height or the distance below here, in which I wanted to place that bracket. So like I said, it was two and a quarter, but I want to go two and three eighths down. And the reason why that is, is I need to allow just a little bit to uh, be able to caulk in here. So you want to leave a little bit of room to be able to caulk it. And right here, so all we're going to do is just snip that metal about two and three eighths. And that's going to give me a spot to slide the bracket into. Now all you got to do is take the bracket I'm gonna pull out the needle nose a little bit, slide it under or behind that metal lath like that. And I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up the mark. And that looks really good right there. And we're gonna double check to make sure the height is correct. And that looks really good. And now all I gotta do is put screws in here to hold them into place where the screw holes are. All right, and that bracket is installed. Now I'm gonna put one of these at each break and at each end of the undersill. I got five brackets going across the bottom of this window. And again, it's about two and three eighths below that window. And now one side of this undersill is going to catch this side of the bracket, then another piece of undersill is going to catch the other. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show you how this works. It's just going to lay right up on the brackets like this. And now I'm not going to install this yet because I still got to apply the scratch coat on this metal lath. And then we're going to put mortar on the back of this and it's going to stick to it. But I just wanted to show you what you got to do to install the undersill. Now I'm going to show you guys how to mix up the mortar for the scratch coat. So the mortar I use for the scratch coat is the same mortar I use to apply the stone veneer. So it's a two to one ratio, two part sand, one part mortar. And it's going to be type S mortar in this case. And I already poured it into this bucket so that way it's easy to scoop out. So since this doesn't have to be exact, it's fine just to use a shovel. So I'm just going to go ahead and take two scoops and put in my bucket. And this is uh, something, since I'm working by myself, only need to use a five gallon bucket at a time. If I had a crew of guys working, I'd want a much larger mix, but this is plenty for me. So now I'm gonna go ahead, get a scoop of the mortar mitt or scoop of the type S mortar, or type S cement, I should say. And now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and put a little bit of clean water in with it. And you don't want to go too much here because if you put too much in, you got to add more um, cement and sand and it's hard to get it perfect. So I found best just go ahead and put a little bit of water in and then just mix it up. And now what I got here is a half inch drill, 
with a mixing blade on it. And all this stuff can be found in my Amazon store. And now what I'm gonna go, do, go ahead and do is start mixing this up. And I want a consistency that's like peanut butter. All right, so I noticed I'm still really dry. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add some water to it. And now let's see what kind of consistency we got now. All right, so if you take a look, see how that's kind of like peanut butter. It's thick, but yet it's not super thick to where it's cakey. So something like that. And now that I got the right consistency, I'm just gonna mix this up for just a few minutes. And now what I do after I'm done mixing it up, I just hold my trigger down. It throws the mortar off as I lift it up out of the uh, five gallon bucket. And I'm gonna place it in water so that way it doesn't set up. And just run it over here just for a few seconds. I go forward, then I go backwards. And voila, nice and clean, and it won't be all caked up with mortar when I come back to mix again. The items I'm gonna be using to parge the mortar onto the wall is this, what's called a mortar hawk. This is what's gonna hold the mortar. And I'm gonna use a 14 inch finished trowel and well, all we gotta do is take a soil scooper because I'm working out of this five gallon bucket, it's just easier to scoop up with a soil scooper instead of a smaller trowel. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and just put on a couple scoops to get started. Now let's go over here to the wall and put it on. Typically you would start at either the top or the bottom, whichever one you prefer, and work down or up to the other side. So I'm just gonna show you right here in the middle of the wall just for demonstration purposes. So you see the process and it's way easier to see it here instead of me being down low or up high. So all you gotta do is take your mortar hawk, hold it right up against the wall, then take your trowel and just push it into that metal lath, right like that. And again, just take a good chunk of mortar here, push it and just slide it right up the wall, right like so. And then after you get a little spot done, just slide over and then just repeat the process. Just like that. So as you can see, you can really go through mortar really quick. And it's really important that you kind of push the mortar into the metal lath. So that way those cups that we uh, installed down it will pull that mortar up into it. If you put a little pressure, just really push and slide your trowel. And now up around windows and stuff, what I like to do is just get a little bit of mortar on the end of my trowel like this, and then just go up against the window like so. And then that way you can get closer into items that way. Or you can also just finish up against it like this. And then Take a little bit of extra mortar on your trowel and then just kind of push it into the edge of that window and then slide up. So there's just a lot of ways you can do this, but do what works best for you. And after some practice, it's really not that hard. This next part isn't that complicated, but you definitely don't want to leave the surface smooth like that because the stone veneer would not stick to it very well. So you really don't need a special tool to do this. In fact, my favorite thing to make a scratch coat is either a rack of roofing nails from the coil nailer or just a piece of wire that's bent over to make a U shape so I can just score right through it. Or you could use one of these regular scratchers, but I never had much luck with these just because every time I go across the scratch coat, it tends to want to pull the scratch coat off in a big clump. So I don't recommend using one of these personally unless you have really wet mortar. And in this case, it's been setting up for a little bit and you always want to make sure your mortar is set up for a little bit because if you try to scratch this when it's fresh, it's going to be really thin. So you want it to set up to where it's just about thumbprint hard, something like that, that looks good. So now all we got to do is just take it and scratch right through the mortar we just put on the wall like so. And I like to get a scratch at least every half inch to every quarter inch, just something like that. That looks really good. And now again, it's not very complicated. 
or if you want to use the rack of nails you can also skim through it with this it does a good job as well so it all depends on what you want but this wire definitely puts a nice deep groove in it and it tends to want to the stone tends to want to adhere to the wall better the more rough the wall is so now i'm going to continue doing the scratch coat to the rest of the wall if you were curious to how long it took me to do the underlayment metal lath and the scratch coat it took me two days to do this bump out that you see me do here it took me one day of doing the felt paper and then it took and the metal lath and then it took me one day of putting the scratch coat on and scratching it so it took me two days to make this video it took about 30 gallons of mortar to do this whole bump out scratch coat the scratch coats complete now it's time to move on to part two check out this video it'll help you out 